I've got my top 10 must-add hitters for this week in fantasy baseball, and that list is coming up next on Beat the Odds. Don't go anywhere. Hello, sports fans, and welcome back to another episode of Beat the Odds. I'm going to give you my top 10 must-add hitters for week four in fantasy baseball. If you like this content, then please smash that like button, and a special thanks goes to all of our subscribers who have been watching these videos, as you now account for 32% of all viewers. To the other 68% of viewers that haven't yet subscribed, I encourage you to do so as it helps me create these videos for you. Also, leave a comment on a player that you think deserves to be on this list. Do you have a burning fantasy baseball question? Ask me on Q. Go to askmeonq.com slash beat the odds, submit your question, and for a small fee I will personalize a response and send it to your email. It's super easy to do and it's a great way to get fantasy baseball advice while also supporting this channel. But wait! Be one of the next 10 people to submit a question and you can do it for free. Just go to askmeonq.com slash beat the odds right now. Now let's kick off this list at number 10. We have Shea Langoliers, 11% owned, batting 6 in the lineup. 4 runs scored on 4 homers, 7 runs batted in, and a 205 average this season. Now don't let the low average fool you. Shea has been rather unlucky in that area as his expected batting average sits firmly at 262, suggesting that we may see a correction in the short term. When he does make contact, he centers it up, it up as evidenced by his 93% barrel rate and his 96% sweet spot. It looks like Shea is going to be good for 25 homers, hitting in the middle of the order for Oakland this season. Moving on to number 9, we have Michael Bush, 30% owned, batting 6th in the lineup for the Cubbies, 6 runs, 3 homers, 8 runs batted in, and a 2.93 average. It wasn't necessarily a blockbuster trade, but the Cubs acquiring Michael Bush has turned into a very solid move. He is a stat cast darling, in the top third in 9 out of 11 batting categories. We could be looking at a true breakout star this year. Bush is also 26, which puts him in most baseball players' prime. I feel he could be someone whose ownership will spike quite a bit this week. Let's go to number 8, we have Nelson Velasquez, 16% own batting 5th in the lineup in Kansas City, 7 runs scored, 2 homers, 6 runs batted in, and a 326 average so far this season. This Royals offense is for real. Velasquez can showcase a lot of power from the right side of the plate. In just under 400 at-bats in his career, he already has hit 25 home runs. If we were to stay on that arc, he may hit 35 this year. He's also creeping up in the order, and the closer he can get to Bobby Witt's number 2 spot, the more productive he's going to be this year. Moving on to number 7, we have Jerks and Profar, 11% own batting 5th in the lineup in San Diego. 6 runs scored, 2 homers, 10 runs batted in, and a 327 average so far. It appears the Padres are good at employing Swiss Army Knife players like Jerks and Profar. Profar has been on base 43% of the time so far this year, which is quite high, but it's also a really good sign that he's taking a lot of walks. He can be a very useful piece if he can keep his on base percentage above 38% for the year. If that happens, we could be looking at 90 plus runs scored from him. Let's go to number 6, we have Eugenio Suarez, 59% owned, batting 6th in the lineup in Arizona. This year he's got 8 runs, 2 homers, 12 runs batted in, and a 273 average. With Suarez, I'm really focusing in on where he's hitting in the order. If he can be a fixture in the middle of the Diamondbacks lineup, then he's going to prove a very useful piece on any fantasy baseball squad. The 32-year-old is fully capable of putting up another 30 home runs over the fence this year. How much run production is going to be linked? to where he's going to end up hitting in the lineup. Let's go to number 5. We have Connor Joe, 51% owned, leading off for Pittsburgh. 11 runs scored, a homer, 10 runs batted in, a stolen base, and a 318 average. We have already discussed Connor Joe's batting profile, but to recap, he excels primarily at getting on base. Joe is very selective at the plate and is willing to get on by any means necessary. The Pittsburgh lineup is very fluid, and Connor has been batting anywhere between the first spot and the, and the seventh spot in the lineup. His value doesn't really change based on where he hits. Moving on to number four, we have Jackson Merrill, 52% owned, batting eighth in San Diego, 12 runs scored so far, a homer, four runs batted in, two stolen bases, and a 304 average. Making the team out of spring training was a bit of a surprise for Jackson Merrill, but we're starting to see why the Padres decided to keep him on the roster. Perhaps the lesser of the three Jacksons to debut this season, Merrill is cur currently holding his own in many offensive categories. What impresses me the most is that he keeps his strikeout percentage under 20% and 
and he keeps his walk percentage at almost 15% so far this year. Let's go to number three. We have Jose Caballero, 42% owned, batting seventh in Tampa Bay, seven runs scored, a homer, six runs batted in, five stolen bases, and a 341 average so far this year. I think it's time that we really give Caballero a good look. With Wander Franco away from the team, Caballero is giving the Rays a good reason to keep Junior Caminero in the minors for conditioning. Caballero won't be a source of power this year, but he does play multiple positions and he's fully capable of stealing a bag. He's an excellent fielder as well, so if Caminero gets called up, Caballero will still have value. Let's go to number two. We have Brandon Marsh, 29% owned, batting six in the lineup in Philadelphia. Seven runs scored, four homers, nine runs batted in, a stolen base, and a 326 average so far this season. I don't know what it is, but I always seem to get excited when baseball's version of the beard puts together a hot streak and I get to talk about it. He's lining up his targets at the plate, and he has a 66.7% hard hit percentage and an average velocity of 94.4 miles per hour on his hits. The Phillies are flush with offensive talent, so it's going to be difficult for Marsh to be able to break into the top third of the lineup, but he's certainly worth, worth owning right now. And finally, at number one, we have Colton Kowser, 39% owned, batting seventh in the lineup in Baltimore. Five runs scored, three homers, 12 runs batted in, a stolen base, and a 481 average. Kowser has been on fire since he got called up. He set a record for the most runs batted in by an Oriole player in a series at Fenway Park. He's not going to hit 400 all, all year, obviously, but his power speed blend is completely sustainable. The Orioles lineup is young and dynamic, and Kowser is going to be another important cog in that hitting machine. And that's going to do it here for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like on the video and, of course, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I am going to sign off for now, but I will catch you guys on the next episode.